In this video, we'll cover some helpful resources that can take your knowledge of GraphQL to the next level and help you demystify some of the things you might see while exploring APIs that we provide. Whether you're just getting started on the platform or you've been using it for years, one of the best ways to learn is to explore what's provided in a baseline instance. If you navigate to All, System Web Services, GraphQL, GraphQL APIs, and look at some of the APIs provided, you'll notice some things that are not covered in this series. That's because this wasn't intended to be a comprehensive lesson on GraphQL, but more of an implementation of GraphQL on ServiceNow. Links to additional GraphQL resources are provided in the description to this video. Let's open up the API for Process Automation Designer and scroll through the schema. There's the schema block and several type blocks. But notice something about some of the inputs in the mutations. They're not primitive data types like string, int, and boolean. They're defined lower down as input blocks. These are used to make the schema more readable and provide for reuse of complex input types across multiple queries and mutations. Let's take a look at this one, timer attributes input. It starts with the keyword input, then defines the properties it contains, including additional complex input types. These can be nested. Further down, we see a union keyword, which means the result, activity position result, can either be valid response or an error response. The error type also contains something interesting, an enumeration, which is a simple list of valid results. All of these are explained in great detail from the GraphQL reference information in the description for this video. I invite you to take a look to expand your knowledge of the schema even further to make your GraphQL APIs more manageable and powerful. Thanks for watching.